Now golf on first down. It's complete. It's Miller. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback oh, saw him, and was able to make the sure catch that. and flip the down marker back to one. Now a first carry for Isaiah Crowell. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On the stop was Aaron Donald. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing the third and long at the outset of this drive. Now gone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by the rookie Terrell Edmonds. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. They'll run it now out of the gun. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. On second down, Jackson. And that's the first NFL catch for Cortland Sutton. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 23 yards on the play. The Eagles into the red zone for the first time. They have a first and two at the 18. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here's Jackson to throw. Sutton ripping it in on the left side. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Over, over, over. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or a man coverage. The drag route can be effective when it's run well. All right, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the 5. Get there, get there, get there. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. Jackson, incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side Still of the second line. Down. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It'll be a pickup of ten yards. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt. And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. Jarvis Landry, his second touchdown on the season. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I, I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him.
Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. The numbers for Crowell in last week's game. 22 carries, 70 yards. That's a good start to the season. They got the win, and they were able to establish a good running game. Nothing that just blew people away, but a nice solid base to get things started. And they expect that to get tuned up and get better as the season moves on. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. It makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Brown. And a great return as he takes us up just shy of the 45. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, he's got him in the daylight. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. From midfield now, here's Jackson, forced out to his left. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, and his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. A first down carry here for Johnson. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal space of the fix and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Over, 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 over! Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. 
We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you across state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Jackson now, flushed out right. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. Nowhere to go with it, incomplete. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be getting rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on field goal? And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A field goal would make it a two-score game, but they're going to go aggressive. They're going to try this thing on fourth and goal. Here we go now. Three, 19. Three, 19. Fourth down. Here's Jackson. Touchdown, Eagles. And that was just an old-fashioned scramble play, fourth and goal and he willed his team into the end zone. And I just don't know how, on the other side of the ball, you keep your composure. You account for everything. You defend everything. And this guy finds a way to make a play on you. Can you tell? That just agitates me a little bit as a former defender. I know your hands are shaking. <laughs> now Jackson, and he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Now a first down throw. Gone. The out route incomplete. Brad Smith. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And that is incomplete here. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Here's gone. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. Yeah, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thompson. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it, and now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, golf. 
He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. First down now, but the clock continues to move. From the red zone now, gone. Throw left side taken in by Miller. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. To the air again, gone. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Zach Miller in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects. Tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back go on, go on. and see the ball go on, go on. coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can make a play on the football. Now it's Jackson. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Can't have enough good pass catching tight ends in the NFL. The Eagles, they wanted to replenish their stock. They lost Trey Burton in the offseason, so they selected Dallas Goddard out of South Dakota State in the second round. And he is nothing but a big-time pass catcher. What a great story, because South Dakota State didn't offer him a scholarship out of high school. He walked on there. Yeah, so now Zach Ertz has a running mate at tight end. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The Eagles on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Third and two. Here's Jackson. Hard throw. Incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards 
stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. A first down carry now for Crowell. Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Here's gone. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. He's picked off just shy of midfield. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. Coney Ely in on the tackle. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Jackson steps away to his left. And he slides to avoid the hit. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. They're trying to show they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop him. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Dancing to his left. Wide open receiver complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game. Got to make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now it's Jackson, and he'll score. Touchdown, Eagles. Lamar Jackson with touchdown number three in the game and six on the year. And the Eagles had six to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. Cut. Black 20. Cut. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. And they're going to get this one all the way out of 
across the 45. A nice gain of 21 yards. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when and told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by the rookie Terrell Edmonds. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. We always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. They begin the drive with Johnson. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Brought down by the cornerback, William Jackson. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Here's Jackson, and he's got his man in stride, complete. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. The Eagles on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. On third and one, Jackson. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Mark Hertzlick in on the stop. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Jackson looking to throw on third. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Well, that's one of those mistakes. That's a fumble that when they get to the sidelines, I know you're mad, Coach, but look, we still got this locked down. But that's not necessarily true, is it? Yeah, their hopes are slim, but you just hate to give them any hope. You could have sealed it right there. Yeah, could have finished them off and, and taken away hope as we like to say and he'll get it down here to the 43 a gain of six there on first and at 50 seconds left he'll spike it to stop the clock the bucks on third down they've been okay two for three thus far this is third and four A shotgun snap for gone. And that's caught by Smith. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. That one 
goes for 24 yards. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left. Inside the 10 at the 8. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. And now the spike comes with 15 seconds on the clock. And that one is incomplete. It stops the clock now with 15 seconds remaining. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the 8-yard line, second and goal. Throwing again is gone. His pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. Now it's gone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or I, you one of those I'm guys a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth. That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for the Eagles, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll return home next week to take on the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, for the Bucks, they'll fall to one and one, and they'll look to get back on the beam next week as they host the Pittsburgh Steelers. It, 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 it describes.